Hey everybody, it's Monday, May the 17th, 2021. Welcome to the video. If you want news from Orlando and Florida, you're in the right place. What we're gonna be looking at this week is the usual COVID stats, usual vaccination stats. How is America doing in comparison with the rest of the world? The US downgraded its travel health notice for the UK from level four to level three this week. I did a separate video on that, but I'm gonna recap in this one. Will COVID passports be a thing? What have Virgin, BA and TUI done with their flights in June and July? Huge news from Disney, Universal and SeaWorld this week. We'll look at the Walt Disney World Parks availability calendar. Is there any more room now? And finally, we've got the weather. If you want news every day, please have a look at the Hit The Theme Parks Facebook page for that. Okay, let's get cracking. New COVID cases on Saturday in the US were 25,642, with Florida top again, unfortunately. That's the lowest daily total since June the 5th, 2020. Seven day moving average for new cases in America, now 33,072. That was 42,795 last week, dropping by 23%. That's beaten our next milestone, which was 36,206 on September the 12th, 2020. US active cases now 6 million, and it was 6.5 million last week, a fall of 8%. The US seven day average for deaths was 676 and it's now 613, that's a 9% fall. The big milestone we're aiming for now is 518 from July the 5th, 2020. Coming into Florida, new cases in Florida on Saturday was 3,319. The seven day moving average for new cases in Florida was 3,948 last week. This week it's 3,278, that's a drop of 17%. Active cases this week in Florida were 375,000 and last week that was 390,000, a 4% drop. The seven day moving average for deaths in Florida is now 52, it was 67 last week, a drop of 21%. The next benchmark is 42, and that was on November the 6th, 2020. The positivity rate for Florida as of Friday is 4.41%, the sixth consecutive day under 5%. In Orange County, that positivity rate was 5.1% as of Saturday, down from 5.9% the previous week. The number of vaccination doses distributed as of Saturday, which was a six day week, was 344.5 million. Last week it was 329.8 million, an increase of 14.7 million or 2.4 million per day. 270.8 million doses have been administered, up from 259.7 six days ago. That's up 11.1 million or 1.85 million per day. There is a definite drop in the number of people per day who are being vaccinated, but that should hopefully start increasing again very soon as 11 to 15 year olds can now get the vaccine from Pfizer. There is a definite drop in the number of people per day who are getting the first dose, but that now should hopefully increase again with the news that Pfizer is now allowed to be given to 12 to 15 year olds. Looking at the chart that shows how different countries are doing for their share of people who have had at least one dose of vaccine. Israel still top with 62.75%, the UK on 53.2%, Chile 46.94%, the US at 46.23%, Europe as a whole just 25.97%. The CDC travel health notice for the UK was downgraded from level 4 to level 3 this week. I did a whole video on this which I'm going to put up there now. Please have a look at that. Um, to get a feeling for how scientific or not this whole CDC leveling thing is. I would draw your attention now to level one. Level one, I think is impossible for the UK to get. So I think there's gonna to have to be um, a reciprocal agreement without the UK getting to level one. Have a look on that video and see which countries are at level one right now and see if you think that those countries are really at level one. After I'd done the research for that video, I tweeted both Simon Calder and Paul Charles, but unfortunately they haven't got back to me. Travel Weekly this week included a piece from Eamon Brennan, Eurocontrol Director General. He believes flights from the UK to the US will recommence in June. Daniel Ruska, MD and Senior Analyst at Bernstein Research, said the US is a matter of weeks than months away. My opinion hasn't changed for a little while now in that I think that the reciprocal agreement will happen in early June and we may find that flights from the UK don't start until early July, depending on how quickly the UK carriers can get their um, stuff together. I do a little bit on BA Virgin and TUI and what they're doing with their flights and I think my thoughts from a couple of weeks ago, past few weeks are borne out with that, but stay tuned for that. Vaccine passports have been a major talking point for a while now. 
and a major concern for a lot of people. Dubai Airport's chief Paul Griffiths said that he doesn't think there is an alternative and is a supporter of having vaccine passports. Yeah, this is a real tough one, isn't it? Um, talked about this for a while now. I'm in two minds about vaccine passports. I think va vaccine passports would be the way to go to get travel quickly done without the need for COVID testing. If you could show people that you're fully vaccinated, why would you need to test? And that means that people can get away pretty quickly. If um, there's a massive COVID testing regime needed, um, that's going to put a strain on logistics and potentially a strain on people's wallets. I, I, the jury's out for me, so let's uh, just keep an open mind on that. Virgin Atlantic are still scheduled to fly out of London Heathrow direct to MCO on July the 1st. Manchester's flight is showing also, but there are no upper class seats left on that flight. They were cheaper than Heathrow's last week. British Airways has pulled its flights from London Heathrow from the 7th to the 13th of June. So it looks like they're looking at one month in advance in terms of being able to operate a flight. So that reinforces my view that it will take a month, maybe a little less, maybe a little more from the time an announcement is made for travel to recommence to it actually recommencing on British carriers. Um, I wish it was quicker than that, but I do think that until that announcement is made, BA is going to continue to pull its flights weekly. TUI, who was also flying from Gatwick in June, has now also pulled its flights from Gatwick. It may be that they're looking at their schedule by calendar month. The first flight with TUI is now scheduled on July the 1st, 2021, out of Gatwick and Edinburgh on that date also. The duo of Birmingham and Manchester on July the 2nd and Glasgow on July the 3rd. All flights are into Sanford at the moment with TUI. Okay, into Disney news then. Huge news this week. Face mask restrictions were partially removed at Walt Disney World on Saturday. Here's a handy guide which shows when masks are still needed to be worn. Basically, that's indoors, on attractions and in attraction lines. Temperature checks for guests were due to be removed yesterday, but they were removed early in line with the mask restrictions being taken away. Six foot physical distancing is still in force in Walt Disney World for the time being, although signage is being installed with no distance mentioned, so it's likely that they will go down to three feet. From various different blogging sites, it would appear that plexiglass is being removed from some of the rides and also rides are being filled row by row now, not leaving a row. And in the theatres, every row is now being filled. So we are getting back to normal, which is good news. Some people are complaining, I see on, on different sites, complaining about um, masks being taken away. Well, if you don't like that, just wear a mask and stay safe. We'll be going live at Epcot from 5 p.m. Eastern today, 10 p.m. UK time. We're gonna have a stroll around Epcot, see what's new see what the uh, Flower and Garden Festival has in store and uh, then a stroll around the world if we get the time. Likely to be a two hour plus stream. At Universal, they've also done away with masks and temperature checks. They actually did this before Disney announced theirs. They said they were gonna do it from yesterday. We went down there yesterday and did a live stream for two and a half hours on Facebook. So if you want to see any of that, please pop over to the Hit The Theme Parks Facebook page and it's available there for you to see. Universal has also formally announced it's reduced its social distancing to three feet. I'm not sure if anybody's really going to abide by that, but at least it's there now, and I think they're going to get back to normal first, probably. The Surfside Inn and Suites reopens on May the 26th. Here are the prices. Those two-bedroom suites look really good value to me. SeaWorld has also got rid of all restrictions from their website. It doesn't actually say that they need masks on attractions in lines or indoors so maybe and i haven't been to to sea world or, or seen any real news on it yet um maybe they've just got rid of it completely and that's really gung-ho if that's uh, that's the case okay let's have a look at the disney world park availability calendar for may theme park tickets and resort guests just have got available generally with animal kingdom also available on some days for annual pass holders nine days are completely sold out currently other than that it's all good except for hollywood studios which has no availability in June, there's no availability for either Magic Kingdom or Hollywood Studios. Epcot is the only park which has capacity every day for theme park tickets and resort guests. For annual pass holders, it's looking very good, with the worst day being Saturday the 5th of June. Into July, and it may be that from July the 17th, there's increased capacity. It's strange that there's a sudden change from some availability to it all being green. Annual pass holders have all parks to choose from for the whole month. August and September are completely clear for all ticket types, apart from annual pass holders at Magic Kingdom on September the 30th. Looking at October, on October the 1st and 31st is unavailable to theme park ticket guests. 
and resort guests at Magic Kingdom and Epcot. Annual pass holders can't visit Magic Kingdom or Epcot on the 1st and Magic Kingdom on the 2nd. It's all clear then from that point up until January the 14th, 2023, when the calendar ends. Having a look at the weather then, it's going to get very toasty. Very nice this week, but really hotting up next week, with the whole week seeing highs of between 95 and 97 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to try and stay away from that. Okay, that is the news this week. Hope you got something useful out of that. If you're new to the channel or if you're old and you haven't subscribed yet, please think about doing so. As I said, you'll get news every day on the Hit the Theme Parks uh, Facebook page. That's it from me for now. There might, who knows, there might be more news to come during the week. If there isn't, I'm going to try and get this Atlanta airport uh, visit out there. So if you are flying indirect, you can get an understanding of how to get from Terminal F, the international terminal, into all the other terminals via the plane train. Okay, until then, stay safe, stay well, have a great week. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.